all my lovely artistic people welcome to my youtube channel karibu fine art and i'm priya the artist behind karibufineart.com um, so i would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for all the encouragement and support you have provided for my first uh, tutorial red panda acrylic painting tutorial uh, i'm really uh, uh, looking into your comments and suggestions and all the feedback you are giving and trying to work on it uh, so please put comments in on my youtube channel you can comment on it you can share it and like it if you if you have really liked it so i, ha I haven't been really happy with the angle uh, so far uh, for the video so i have got a new tripod as you can see the tripod i'll be using for the better quality video and the angle so after the next week's video you should be getting much much better quality videos uh, so this week's painting is a, a first part of two part uh, tutorial painting tutorial so in the first part in today's tutorial we'll be learning how to paint an uh, eagle nebula it's an uh, it's a really beautiful astronomical uh, body out there so you're going to use you we are going to uh, paint that with acrylic paints for this week and next week we'll be using today's painting as a background painting and we'll be actually painting uh, an uh, crown eagle on top of it looking at the eagle nebula and after that we are going to apply a few oil layers as well on these acrylic underpainting stuff so it's pretty good for people who want to really learn uh, the techniques behind oil or acrylic painting so uh, uh, watch this video and come back for the next week's video as well so let's get get back to the tutorial now so as you can see this is the end result we are going to get today you must be thinking what is a nebula uh, what is priya talking about so it's a nebula is an interstellar cloud of hydrogen helium a lot of the gases as well as dust and as you can see it's one of the most beautiful creations in the universe and um, for this painting i have used winsor and newton cotton canvas professional canvas and gessoed it down with uh, some uh, gesso you can see i have used montmartre black gesso and some sponge brush and I have used Liquitex Basics paint. So let's start with the painting. You can see my canvas, which is now just sewed with the black paint. And again, to specify, I'm using Liquitex Basics acrylic paints. You can get those paints anywhere uh, in any art store. It's really available. It's uh, one of the really cheap range of acrylic paints and pretty good quality to start with. For the first few layers, I'm just using direct paint, premium blue, premium red and white with a stencil brush and trying to blend it together uh, at the central location on the canvas where the actual light source of the nebulae is. So once I'm done with my initial layers, I'll start to add some more water to the paint and use a mop brush to blend everything together very well. Uh, very smoothly uh, as when it comes to getting a little bit cloudy effect you don't want any sharp edges on your painting um, for this painting uh, as you can see here I'm using the same mop brush which I talked to you uh, in my last video but if you have missed that uh, this is actually not a painting mop brush this is actually a makeup blush brush uh, but it works really well uh, for blending everything together uh, for acrylic or oil paints. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a big fan of that brush. And uh, for the stencil brush, this is just again Montmartre uh, stencil brush. I got a set of three brushes uh, for like five bucks or so. It was pretty cheap. And these are uh, useful brushes for... Um, uh, creating a cloudy backgrounds and I can show you some more use of it uh, in some time now that how you can create stars with uh, these uh, uh, using these two stencil brushes um, so basically uh, I'm I have now started to add some more colors uh, around the central location you can see I have added some cadmium orange as well as some purple color to it so uh, now uh, it should look somehow like the surrounding area uh, is reflecting uh, the light uh, reflecting the centralized light source mm, so you should be adding more and more colors onto it 
so so layering and adding different colors uh, it creates that 3d effect really successfully so now you can see I'm using these two stencil brushes I have slowed down the video for you just to show you how you can make a cluster of stars uh, with this process so I have used two stencil brushes I'm dipping them in a very thin down white paint uh, acrylic paint and just using this kind of crisscross action to create those clusters of stars so uh, this kind of uh, method you will be applying again and again in future videos uh, uh, and for this video because you're doing a lot of layering after some point once we do a lot of glazing layers you will again want to create some more uh, clusters of stars mm, and the stars are not in motion here because this is a nebula uh, you can compare a nebula like a nebula is a nursery of stars nursery of newborn stars so usually a nebula gets formed after a star runs out of its complete fuel and it dies out bursting and spreading out all of the elements in the space so what happens is over the time uh, after millions of years this material starts to settle down uh, to form some newborn stars so it's a very very interesting uh, aspect astronomical phenomenon so um, what happens is there so, so the whole section of the nebula the complete nebula is not filled with stars it has cluster of stars uh, newborn stars and so most of the portion portions will still be very cloudy and dusty which create this uh, really really variety of different shapes uh, because of which nebula looks really beautiful uh, in uh, if you capture the images using space telescopes the images are uh, just breathtaking um, so but the major difference between uh, a galaxy and nebula is as you uh, as I explained that a nebula is like a nursery of newborn stars um, so a galaxy is a full-blown multinational company or an industry you can say where all the mid-aged stars are under full pressure to move ahead of each other so there is this competition uh, in the rat race so the stars in galaxy have been formed already billions of light years back and uh, sorry billions of years back um, and are in constant motion due to the centralized um, uh, infinite simul weighing black hole at the center which you can call the CEO of that CEO of that multinational company so the analogy is like this so a galaxy looks completely different kind of structure and a nebula looks a completely different kind of structure so uh, you can see now I'm trying to add more and more layers with some of the cadmium oranges and I'm using the premium red color again uh, because see when you use the same color uh, by adding more water to it or uh, when you apply the color, color directly um, the effect you get is pretty different um, right now I'm going through uh, uh, defining the exact shapes of nebulae eagle nebulae uh, looks like an eagle so that's why it is called an eagle nebula and there are three pillars of creations uh, it's called pillars of creations for some reason and you can see that uh, I'm defining more and more of those shapes now I'm trying to define the shapes better uh, one more brush I have used throughout I have used uh, a liner brush to define those shapes more accurately and right now I'm using this filbert brush which is of size 3 I guess to do more and more layering on top of the previous layers I have had and even this brush right now I'm using is a filbert brush it must be filbert 9 number 9 so now you can see once I add more and more layers to it the previous star clusters I have made uh, tend to get little faded and they are not pretty clear so that's why I was mentioning that you need to put more and more uh, you know layers of clustered stars uh, after you go through each layer of glazing or painting so now you can see I'm defining uh, the nebula uh, eagle nebula shape properly using white paint and these are the pillars of creations which are creating right now uh, this is just clear white paint 
and I'm using a mop brush to blend the edges of these shapes. So at the end of this painting you will see we won't get a still very vibrant effect because we are going to go over oil layers now uh, and only after that uh, like in the next week's video and only after that you will get an amazing amazing vibrant colors. So once I am done with defining the pillars of creation shape. I am putting uh, some more purple color and I am defining the shapes better and better. So see at the end of this painting uh, you will get a nice background of nebula but that won't be the final layers we'll have. Uh, next week uh, after I go through the actual crown eagle on top of uh, this painting uh, I am going to put a lot of a lot more layers of oil. So basically this will be an uh, oil over acrylic uh, painting technique uh, in which you can use best of both the mediums acrylic medium as well as oil medium and I can uh, take you through the whole step by step process how I do it you have to let the acrylic painting dry uh, pretty well which dries in like less than 10 minutes it will dry completely and you can start applying oil layers on it and because of oil layers you get more vibrancy which you can't simply get with just putting acrylic layers some people some artists do really good job with acrylic but yeah I prefer oil or acrylic for most of my paintings as you can see uh, once I have put the previous star clusters in I have because I have done so many layers after that and I have done so much of glazing I have uh, again gone through the same process to put more uh, clusters of stars onto it and you can see I have pretty much defined the eagle um, nebula uh, shape and the pillars of creations very well and the top cloud. Uh, I'm still not very happy with this angle because I ha uh, I at the time of recording of this video I didn't get my um, the new tripod which I have got. So uh, this video and the next week's video might have might still have little bad angle to it but after that it will be definitely improved I promise you that because uh, from uh, then onwards I'll be uh, recording all the videos with the tripod uh, angle so it should be all good after that uh, so you can see uh, every layer I apply I try to blend everything together uh, I don't want any very very harsh defined edges to this painting so I try to blend everything together with the mop brush whatever remaining um, very defined edges I have I can still uh, like I can still tone it down using oil paints oil paint layers which I'll do as a part of next week's tutorial mm, so uh, here uh, there, sh there has to be a clear source of light uh, at the center and you can see I'm trying to make the central portion lighter and lighter um, and try to uh, show that uh, the l other part of the cloud, the surrounding of the cloud is reflecting that middle portion of light source very well. Uh, and so you can see in the middle uh, I'm now uh, applying a cadmium yellow color and a lot of shades of orange to show that the outer areas in the cloud are actually reflecting the light uh, on it. So now we have come to an end of today's tutorial. Um, but don't worry, we are going to uh, see you again on next Thursday with a much more interesting aspect to it. So we are going to paint something, some another object with this uh, Eagle Nebula uh, we are going to use as a background image. And um, guys, please comment uh, in the on my YouTube channel and please provide me more and more suggestions and if I can improve uh, uh, with my voiceover. And the angle and the video quality will be definitely uh, improved uh, after the next week's, next Thursday's video. And this is the final result which you are going to get. And visit my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook page. And next week, uh, the painting is going to take a really, really interesting turn. So please come back to check it out. And thank you so much.